to hear about it all week. I'm delighted to welcome three you know, big players in the affiliate space in France. Um, we have John Sampson, who's uh, CEO of Gamre, one of the biggest uh, affiliate setups in France. We have Maxime Combarieu, who's a uh, co-founder of Win Comparator, another big affiliate in France. And I'm delighted to welcome Bertrand Boulet, who's uh, manager for acquisitions for PMU. So, for those who don't know, obviously, it's the excellent head of horse racing Monopoly, the second biggest tote in Europe, or in the world, the third biggest in Europe, and who, a company that has managed its transition to the online gaming market extremely successfully, um, obviously helped by a big setup, but they have been very good uh, as a, a form of Monopoly in adapting very well to the current uh, environment. Um, but anyway, to start things off, I'm just going to ask each of them to do an introduction about their company, uh, their activities, give a very short view of, of how they see the market developing so far, and then we'll get cracking with a discussion, and obviously we'll finish off the last 10-15 minutes uh, with a Q&A, so if you have any questions uh, and you want more information about the French market or the regu a regulated market, uh, you know, feel free to ask away. Uh, so maybe, John, if we could start with you. Yes, uh, Gamerap is uh, an agency for uh, EPI and affiliates. Uh, working mainly on the French market, we have them to monetize their traffic. Uh, I'm the founder of this company. We were active pre-regulation and now post-regulation. Um, I'm also involved in an agency for operators, for, for advertisers, and have some stakes in uh, some affiliate business uh, on the French market. So, uh, can you hear me? Okay, fine. Uh, well, um, I'm in chair of acquisition at PMU. PMU is a former uh, horse racing monopoly. And uh, since day one of the opening of the market, we are now operating also in the sports book and poker. Hello, uh, my name is Maxime uh, Pombarieu. Uh, I work for uh, Win Comparator, which is uh, an affiliate website uh, present uh, over nine countries, but our main markets are France and Italy. And we provide like the, all the tools that the countries need to to make the bets, such as odds comparison, live score, tips, bookmaker reviews, and, and so on. Uh, we recently bought Dorfu.fr, which is the one of the biggest uh, horse racing uh, affiliate sites in France, and we have also a Facebook activity. Okay. 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 Well, could you give us, from your own perspective, you know, your your take on the French market since it's regulated nearly two years ago. Um, <clears throat> maybe if I start with you, Max, I mean, you work in France and Italy, who happen to be two major markets, one or two of the few, ma the few markets to have actually regulated their online gaming sector. Maybe you could give us your perspective. Yeah, in that I'm not maybe the very best place to answer this question because we began our activity uh, in 2009 and we were quite small, so we haven't known like the golden age no, but as, as boys, so you've only worked really in a yeah, regulated in, uh, environment. Yeah. And in, in this environment, I think that the, the, the main uh, observation that can be made uh, is all about the attractivity of the, the product. Right. Uh, for poker, I guess that the, the rake uh, and the, um, the fact that the, the liquidity that is not international has downgraded the product a lot. For sports betting, the kind of bets, the number of bets where you are allowed to bet, uh, the um, the, the, the winnings that are uh, given back to the players, which is uh, topped to 85%, makes the odds not so attractive. Yeah. And I think on those markets, you always have like 5% of the players which are making most of the GGR. And those 5%, everybody uh, asks himself where, where, they, where they've gone and if they are really still betting in France. Okay. So, not necessarily the most positive of. <laughs> of statements concerning the <laughs> regulated market. But the positive statement, I think uh, it's, it's a legal thing now, so it has yeah. to be in a grey zone, so you, you could not advertise. So it has created, uh, with the World Cup, a big uh, big thing, a big, yeah. uh, very positive uh, dynamic. Uh, I think uh, the, the, we, we had the, the opportunity to see a good advertising campaign, such, such as the one of PMU, which has, uh, in every spirit, I think it's, it's quite present. So all these things went, went very good for the, the image and the, and the business. But now that the product has to be more attractive and the tax level uh, now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. That's from your perspective, obviously, historically, horse racing is, is PMU. Yeah, sure. still is, but I mean... <coughs> well, on my side, um, my overall, overall feeling is that um, the, uh, 
it, it is a positive outcome. Uh, the fact is, for instance, for, for concerning regulation, I mean, our gel, it's the commission that enforces the law in France. Um, just before uh, the football World Cup, and so all the operators had the ability to operate in time. Um, also, uh, the fact that um, we regulate the market now, all players are on the same base, I would say the rules are, are the same, same fiscality, same taxes. Apart from, from them who are you know, in offshore sites, but uh, still. Let's say, let's say it's a real opening and so we are on the same base now. Um, there are also the fact that we have um, now a constructive dialogue with um, the sportive federation. Um, because I don't know if everyone is, is aware of it, but we have to pay or to give a kind of grant to all the federation to have the, the, the ability to uh, fix odds on uh, their discipline. Yeah, yeah, so, so. And then also uh, on the PMU perspective, I mean, we have very good figures. So we're quite happy. I mean, yeah, quite, <laughs> quite a lot. So I could tell you maybe um, the figures of last year, uh, 2011. So the internet uh, turnover has grown, uh, has risen by 45%. Uh, achieve, we, we've been achieving like one. Point uh, three uh, billion euro. In states. Yeah. yeah. In states. And also, um, but for the gross gain revenue, uh, we have achieved, I think, uh, like close to two hundred thirty. Yeah, it's three three. Yeah. Yeah, sorry, three million euro. And so, which means plus thirty uh, percent year year over year. Yeah. So, and so that's. Very positive on our side. We can also we have managed to di diversify and modernize our uh, yeah. brand image. And I would say also for the players, it's been good news because they we have uh, the winnings that have increased by um, eight percent uh, on uh, their side. And also we didn't see any uh, increase of the addiction rate. So. Yeah, good opening for us. Yeah, yeah. Uh, John, if you give your perspective. Yes, uh, I will be a bit more more positive than Maxime. Uh, uh, since since the opening, we had uh, I was reading the figures of, of Argel. We had uh, four million registered players, new registered players within eighteen months. Four million. And what for gambling? No, for oh, uh, the market. Yeah, yeah. We are <laughs> And, uh, uh, and half of them who are confirmed accounts, so that's 2 million plus people who have confirmed their accounts. So it, it, it has been a huge business for, for affiliates since the opening. I mean, uh, uh, we, for volume, uh, all operators started from scratch. Yeah. So, uh, uh, and also there was this dynamic of uh, operators like PMU who wanted to get some market shares. Yeah. So uh, they had good acquisition. Uh, budget still lower uh, than pre-regulation, but still quite high compared to how much money they are they are, are making. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, it, it, it has been a positive first uh, 18 months. Uh, only I think in uh, 2011 there was 1.5 million players that registered. So and I guess in this year it's going to be probably 500 plus. Yeah. Uh, so there is a, a lot to grab for affiliates. Uh, uh, in this context, still, uh, the more gloomy side is, uh, is um, so taxation, as uh, as, as, as Maxim said, uh, and another uh, big thing that changed for for uh, Afiet is a, a change of uh, uh, of negotiation power with, with operators. Yeah. Free regulation, we were the king. We negotiate for very high CPS, we, we were ruling the, the market and sometimes quite unfairly and there was kind of a boxing yeah. game here. Uh, now uh, operators like uh, to sponsor links offline, uh, Facebook, we are just a, a tiny channel. Uh, so, so how do you deal with that change of power? I mean, because obviously like you said, pre-regulation you were driving so much more traffic and also there was casino as well before, which obviously there isn't these days. But I mean, 
how do you deal with that such a change of circumstances? Uh, well, we, we cope with it. Volumes have compensated that. We had huge volumes. So what, in the regulated? Uh, yes, in the regulated market, much higher than pre-regulation. Okay. Uh, and then it's a, it's a, it's a game of, of, uh, of negotiation, of power, of, of discussion with operators, of improving the product, of the, 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 the affiliates. Uh, yes, uh, it's, uh, but a lot of affiliates haven't coped with that. And uh, the landscape has, has changed. You have guys like Rue Comparator or Rue or, or Rue des or new affiliates who did it before the regulation. And the old top affiliates, some of them have disappeared. Yeah, yeah. And in terms of, um, in terms of, well, I, I, I want to ask you about the illegal market because there's all sorts of things are said about it. For us. I mean, you know, for example, the press reckon there's up to 30% of the sports betting market goes offshore in France. So 30% of the market is, is a lot, a third of it. Um, I mean, what what is your take as as affiliates who, you know, obviously peer viewers that you need? Affiliates who don't, you don't do casino, you don't do offshore, you don't do that. I mean, is it simply down to the offers? Almost the offers is, is not that good. People are going to go elsewhere. I mean, is that the simple answer? Or is it, you don't think that's it? For me, the, the state is here, and we have to make the product more attractive to make those people come back elsewhere. Mm -hmm. uh, today it's quite easy to, to go to go from, I think. Uh, did it, but through VPN, a proxy, yeah. stuff like this, you can do it. So, those 30%, I think they are, as you said, it's quite important in the market. So, we have to make them come and uh, it will generate uh, more revenues for us, more tax for the state. It's, it's, it's all good in terms of uh, for the society. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, and then, oh, from your point of view, I mean, I remember just interviewing your results, the, um, the statements read obviously, horse racing was the part of the online side of it. But I think, if I'm not mistaken, you mentioned that there's a good cross selling across poker and sports betting. A lot of sports betters pay poker, maybe not so much the other way, but certainly. I mean, is that. Why have you managed to do it when, say, Beckley is going, you know, through pretty tough times? I mean, what, what is it? You know, well, what well, I cannot tell you for my competitors, but still, what I can tell you is that, sure, I must admit that the sports book market has been quite deceptive for us. Sure. It's been deceptive. Yeah, quite deceptive. I, I mean, because we were, you know, we knew that normally there should have been much more money on that market, but uh, it's only 600 million euro this year. So it's close to, close to. Um, so sure, there there are different reasons that can that can explain that. One one of them, where cultural, culturally, um, French people are not that much involved into. Uh, sports betting. So the, the, there is one re reason, also the fact that we have high taxes yeah. that makes the offer less attra attractive. And just just to balance on this, when you say culturally, they are, they are not much into sports betting. Uh, it's true in a way they are not very used to the fixed odds. Yeah. Uh, but Paris en Sport, which is the offline product of Francaise des Jeux has raised 30% last year, really? switching from 600 million to 1 billion. Really? So people do sports betting. Yeah. But the thing is, for Paris Sport, they go in the cafe, nobody asks them for an ID, their uh, bank account, sure. and so that the process, to, and the, the, the conclusion is that the offline sports betting that has benefits from the opening yeah. of the online market in a way. So, but it's a bit uh, yeah, well, strong, but, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah but I'm not sure that it does all explain. But still, I think that sure, culturally we're not as the UK. Uh, also, the offer is not as much as attractive as it, as, it, as it should be, and also the fact that we, um, yeah, we're we're fighting for expanding uh, all the competition that we can offer, and yeah, we have some troubles to get all this competition. So. Um, so all, all that makes that um, the environment, uh, the French environment, is not very active. And so you can see all the offers, they're, they're quite the same. Yeah. And so that's, that's one of the reasons that is not uh, what we were expecting. Yeah. But uh, on the contrary, poker and horse racing are very active. Yeah. 
I mean, horse racing has is, is, is got a lot of history, obviously. Sure, but uh, I mean, we, we would have maybe expect that um, the horse racing goes down, you know, because of development. Yeah. But uh, it didn't happen. We, we managed to increase by 20% yeah. the global internet turnover horse, horse racing. Yeah. So it does mean that people are eager to, to bet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, fair enough. Yeah. Um, okay. And I guess, I mean, from the third point, I mean, just talking about the same, maybe the smaller horse races, I mean, you know, is there, everyone is saying it's a consolidated market, you can have five, six players maximum in a, in, in a year's time, two years' time. Um, a couple of small oil places I spoke to recently, they were saying, well, you know, we might, we think we're going to break even next year, but basically we're very careful, you know, we're very, we watch every centime, every euro that, that we spend. I mean, is there, do they have a part to play in, in, in this market that supposedly is for only big players? Or, that's, that's what a lot of people are predicting. I mean, John, do you deal with some of the smaller places? Are there two, two types of affiliates will, will answer this question. You have uh, also push affiliates with big media websites, we work on some big sports websites. Yeah. Um, on those websites, smaller operators have no room uh, no, to play these it. big brands that, that play uh, the likes of PMU, Barry Way, Iwi. So there, the question is, is, is quickly answered. Uh, then you have all the other affiliates, more the search affiliates, the specialized affiliates, the poker communities, and, uh, and there, there are also pre-regulations. There are leveraging on on the on the competition between small operators, big, uh, bigger operators, uh, trying to make their players play in different rooms, uh, like sites like Opoker. Nicola is there. Um, they, are, they are leveraging a lot on the small port rooms. Right. And that, that will continue for the next, uh, next years. So, but I mean, and I guess what I'm asking is so it's all the small operators for managing to, you know, managing to, to do okay out of it and, you know, not, not constantly fighting this hamster on the wheel type and trying to keep up with, with the cost of everything. It's true that uh, a lot of them are struggling. Uh, Paris 365 is a small betting oh, yeah, right, operator yeah. Yeah, that just closed their affiliate uh, program with a one week notice. Yeah. Uh, you wouldn't have that happening on any non regulated markets yeah. or even, even in Italy. Uh, you had a horse racing uh, operator, Bennett, who closed down. Yeah. Uh, and it's true that uh, yeah. operators like France Paris or, or uh, or uh, other small players, poker, 83, and so on, they're not able to, to feed the, the market. And uh, uh, yes, it's, it's not as joyful as it was pre, pre-regulation. And, and I think one difficulty for them as well is the DET, which is the document uh, of the RF. The technical requirements. The technical requirements to, to comply to all the, those requirements. It's a heavy work. Yeah. It involves a lot of technical resources and all those resources in a way they are not used to uh, market innovation and stuff like that so they, they, they spend their time being compliant with, with the law and at uh, the same time they don't innovate so much and in this market I think you need to propose new things as uh, Bertrand said that it's not very cultural in France but by proposing new things you, you can attract a much bigger part of the market and new player thing. Yeah, yeah, you can, yeah, have content to diversify yeah. your office. And for the moment, it's, it's a bit flat. Yeah. Everybody does the same as everybody, and yeah. it's a bit like this. Yeah. And I was going to ask, I mean, in terms of, in terms of whether from the operator or the affiliates, I mean, in terms of content, in terms of, you know, what the French call the richness of content or not, I mean, have you, you know, could you name some sites that you feel have used content very well to attract players? Or because, you know, I talk to a lot of operators and they say, you know, we don't, we don't, we don't want to. We don't. The market is so tough. And we, we're watching every penny. We don't want to spend money on, on the content, to, to, you know, whether for search or whether to attract players. So it's really marketing, marketing, marketing. You know, keep all the space they can on the site for offers. I mean, do you know of any sites who are doing that well? Or <laughs> other than operators, operators, yeah, or or affiliates, or affiliates, actually. or affiliates. But affiliates, I have a little idea. Um, for, for, for operators, I think uh, they all provide uh, uh, video, uh, uh, some of them, huh? uh, but I think it's not enough today, uh, you have to, uh, to 
uh, teach people that it's not, not the effort is not big enough in terms of uh, learning uh, to people how to bet. It's a bit new this industry for the, the, let's say the mass market, and I think uh, we should uh, affiliate and operators much more uh, focus on, the, on those newcomers and learn them and, and provide them good information, useful information. On the, on the affiliate site, we have some content uh, media sites, yeah. and uh, this is true that uh, search affiliates have quite, uh, or or, or uh, specialized affiliates are quite happy uh, now. Yeah. Uh, but uh, uh, more media sites, sports sites, and so they are they are struggling a lot to uh, to generate revenues with bookmakers. Uh, if, if you people people don't, what they don't click on that. To convert, yeah. uh, and also now we, we we reach a stage at which uh, all the players have a few accounts uh, at, at operators. So then I send uh, uh, thousands of clicks. We have uh, our, our football sites spend sends thousands of clicks every month on betting buttons, on uh, proper articles. If you is there, and so it's a thousand clicks for you know 50 cash players or 100 cash players. So it's about five thousand to ten thousand clicks. So for them, it's, it's not profitable. Yeah. Uh, and here we will reach a more major stage in, in the industry where we have to rethink how to uh, how the affiliates should be paid. Uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, okay. In terms of in terms of um, again, I mean, this is coming to, to the relationship between operators and, and affiliates. But I mean, some operators have really gone down the mass market. Here is one, but here is. Stars, Winamax, Bentley. I mean, but especially Stars and Winamax, for example, they've, you know, the, some people say they've neglected their affiliate because they've gone through mass advertising and stuff. I mean, what, what is your perspective on this? Has it, have you found it detrimental, or has that changed from the operator's point of view as well, or are they having to refocus on affiliates as well? It might depend on affiliate. From our perspective, I think we have a good relationship with operators. Yeah. And then you spoke about. Uh, some operators which, uh, which are knowing difficulties right now, I think they are cutting uh, first all the, the big uh, expenses such as uh, sponsorship, sponsorship uh, TV campaigns, press, radio and stuff like that. And the, all the online marketing, especially the affiliate marketing, we don't see the budget decrease, in my, in my opinion. And this, I think, will be the last budget, budget to last if, they, if they all, all the other had to be cut. You know, because we recognize the value of the work of affiliates and uh, they can measure and track, which is already uh, yeah. very important. So in that way, I think the the, the relationship is, is preserved between affiliates and the operators. <laughs> yeah, I can jump in. Um, well, sure, we'll be, we've been uh, investing a lot at the opening. I mean, that was part of the game, you know, to gain market share. And so how do you gain market share, brand, visit, brand awareness, brand visibility? So that was part of the game. And now that, now that we have realized, you know, what we, what is the exact um, potential of the market share, we're gonna re reallocate our investments. And so, but it doesn't mean that we do not want to invest because um, I was talking. Before. Yeah, we're gonna keep continuing investing and much, but uh, still, we're gonna reallocate the way we do. It. We're going to maybe segment the way we, you know, we uh, build up a commission scheme and all that stuff. So maybe we will go more deeply into the um, incre yeah, increasing the margin and the pro profitability. But at the very beginning, you know, you have to get market share. Yeah. So, so, so now you're gonna, you're gonna you can you come with the weapons and then. You're, uh, you're much, uh, so, so now you can cut the payments to a free, you can cut the commission to a way. But for, for instance, yeah, a way, a way to do it to, you know, to rationalize the, the experience. So far we've been working with a, a very good uh, affiliate platform, but we, we are thinking of uh, moving and getting our own affiliate uh, program. And so we're going to launch the poker uh, affiliate program within the next coming weeks. So. Yeah. Yeah, that's how things go, but it doesn't mean that we do not, do not invest. It's, we do it 
on a different way. Yeah, sure, sure. Yeah. Di diversifying the cost yeah. and, and getting more variety in your And trying to reduce uh, the third party um, money that we give you. Yeah, yeah that's a good thing. Okay. Um, okay. Well, I mean, we've sort of got sort of five, five ish minutes. I mean, does anyone have any questions? If, if you could just introduce yourself as yes. well. Yes, hi again. Uh, so I'm, uh, I'm an Italian affiliate. I just started in the sector. I just was um, wondering uh, what's your take? I mean, these two countries, uh, do you see them any close to saturation? I know that it happened just two years ago, the regulation. But uh, can you see it like, say, in six months' time, that it would be like uh, for the main, the major operator? It would be uh, a question how to get like a new real money players I mean, because uh, yeah there are some sectors like see uh, I'm specialized in poker so I already can see for instance in Italy where basically it kinds of uh, becomes difficult to to, to, to to get your players basically because it's kind of a tricky sector either you you're into it or it's difficult to involve other people into it so I was wondering if you you can see that. <laughs> For the moment, no, because I think uh, France has opened quite recently, it's not even two years. So the time that people uh, know those offers, they can share a bit, create similar accounts. So we don't see like, the conversion rate falling. After, in two, three, five years, we can, when you do uh, ask ourselves the question, will, will it be more difficult to attract new players? So maybe affiliates at that time will be more uh, paid according to uh, the redeposit they generate or the player value, if they drive high player value maybe, the CPA as, as we know it today will be uh, modified in, in the few years coming. I think it will be, uh, I think it will be all the, on the travel or e-commerce industry or affiliates, they are rarely paid on the, on the basis of the new players. They are paid uh, on the percentage of the deposit or on, on the CBC or stuff like that. But, this question of new player, when the market gets to more and more saturate, is, is a real question to, to ask. Because it's definitely like a mature market already. No, well, no, it's, no, it's not. No, we got, it's, uh, no. At, at least half a million new players that will register on French sites. I mean, compared to the UK, to, it's, 2012. it's not. It's uh, totally immature. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, in, in Italy, you know, uh, I, I don't know how many new accounts you opened in your country last year, I guess the, the figures are, are public, but you can at least expect half of that in, two, in, in 2012. So we, we have touched a little bit the ETN market and uh, we can see there is a good potential of volumes and I'm sure uh, yeah. can, I guess, what kind of progress site uh, do you have? Is it more uh, community based or uh, search or search traffic? Uh, more community. Yeah, so, uh, we have the same in France, community-based website. Uh, then it's an issue of more renewing in your community. Um, is it, uh, could you say that is a cha the challenge is to come up with new ideas in these markets? This is, uh, this is definitely... Ah, yes. Yes, there is a, a lot in uh, comparison sites, you know, that the just came in. Have, I'm not sure uh, how, how the Italian market looks like. In poker, you have uh, uh, all the tools that help the player to Play better. That's a that's a huge market, uh, and I'm sure with your community you can uh, leverage on that. Okay, we've got another question. Thank you. I was it's in a while. I was telling you. I was wondering how do you see uh, the regulators or the hardware? They starting to. To block and try the ISP to block some of the illegal approaches that they keep offering, like casino for or sport betting without any license. How do you see this year the actual? Do you think that they have the capability to keep going forward blocking those players, but also the affiliate one? Because there are still a lot of affiliate who keep promoting those websites that are illegal at the market, and that's painful for us, that's painful for you that are operating a legal business. How do you, do you see that? Do you think that we have the bandwidth to be able to block those affiliates and keep promoting uh, illegal websites? <laughs> <laughs> well, 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 I'm not the RGS, so I cannot tell you their roadmap on the IT, you know, what they're going to make uh, as an IT evolvement, but I know that they're very 
eager to make sure that you know, illegals are not promoted in the French market. And I do know that they are investing in, in technology to avoid that. So I can't tell you exactly you know, what, what, what's their aim. But do you have an idea about the share of the market of reality? The share of the market of reality? Well, for casinos. In casino, yeah. For casino, everything. Well, I mean, I mean what well, Beck, your parent company, Beck, yeah. they made a published uh, a survey. They reckon there was 800,000 French people who still pay on, on the legal casino sites. So, I mean, you can extrapolate whatever you want from that. So, it's nearly a million people. So. I think it's, it's, it's more VIP players. Yeah. You're, you're losing. I'm not uh, so sure about those big numbers of number of, of players, but for the VIP players, I'm sure. Uh, all, a lot of players who withdrew from the French market kept their VIP, VIP, VIP players through, through VPN. So, yeah. so, and when, I mean, you're, when you're saying that uh, a lot of affiliates still promote those groups, I, I don't know because I'm not into casino, but I think for horse racing, poker, and uh, sports betting, very few affiliates today are promoting uh, uh, the groups. Uh, almost none of, none of them. No, but I think, I mean, for but casino, I, did, I asked our show and they said basically, you know, they consider it to be legal advertising, you know, you're advertising a product that is not legal, uh, that has no protection, that has no, you know, you know. Um, so yeah, they do want to block them, but look, again, it's just the same problem as it is for some of the other illegal sites that are offshore, it's how to get hold of, you know, how to stop them. You, know, you, can, you can send out as many injunctions as you want if, if, the, if the affiliate or whoever doesn't want to stop it. It's not, it's not um, are there any other questions? Um, I, I just had one about Italy I wanted to ask you. I mean, do, in Italy, are there the same practical issues as there are in France? I mean, literally, you know, the player has to send a photocopy of their passport to the regulator, who gives a provisional account to the player, who can then pay, and then the affiliate sometimes doesn't even know if the person has opened his account with the operator, and if the operator doesn't want to tell him, you know. I mean, is it, do, are they the same issues in this? I'm not sure, uh, I, I won't tell uh, you exactly because I'm not really sure, but what I uh, observe is that Italy is a much less developed market, I think, in terms of e-commerce, internet, uh, credit card and everything, so I think there's something like, uh, and they're catching up right now. So I think it was maybe uh, five years ago, uh, sport, online sports betting or online poker in Italy was a uh, well, because they were not as a northern country more used to uh, uh, those electronic uses and yeah. now they are catching up a lot and we see the, the, the traffic at the same time but in terms of the practical issues yeah. that, that the French affiliates are finding you know like but we don't know if that player is open an account because the operator hasn't told us for example I mean do you, do you find those issues are relevant in Italy as well I mean, do you issues of, of transparency with operators yeah uh, we have more more transparency now Oh really? Yes. yes. Okay. Um, much more. Yeah. And it's much more confident. Uh, much more confidence in the business. Because it's regulated. It's regulated. Uh, there are, we can meet them in Paris. You know, locally we don't have to uh, travel far to, 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 to meet the people. Yeah. You know there is Argel that controls the figures. Uh, we have third party softwares which are quite good. Uh, also used in, in the unregulated market. In Pam Access, uh, Net yeah, yeah. Uh, Train Doubler is used a lot as a white label for, and uh, yeah, it's just uh, we trust those people and you can get most of the figures we ask as long as it's within the, the regulation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. okay. Um, well, I mean, before we wrap up, anyone, anyone else with any questions? I mean, very briefly, maybe if you could give us your 30 second predictions for this year. I mean, what, what max have you seen? But this year, uh, we mainly operate uh, in sports betting and we have a good year to come. Yeah. And in sports betting, one year out of two is good and one year is bad. This year is the Euro <laughs> and the Olympics, so it's a good oh, year. Big event. Yeah, big yeah, events, so. so we are sure that those events are, are very important and crucial for operators to attract new players. They all count on those events to recruit and then they will drive loyalty and, yeah. and work those client bases, but they need big events to yeah, so sure. we are quite confident to be here. Yeah, I guess that we, yeah, we are going to have good years and so I'm happy with it. Um, but also I think that the market will still um, be consolidated. I think that operators and also
so maybe affiliate network and whatever, they will get consolidated. You know, that's been the case in the last year. And now I think that it might go further. And also, um, and that's mostly all. Okay. Yeah, uh, well, France is going to roll uh, for the next few, few, few years because there's still a big pool of players to, to recruit. Maybe in a few years, uh, casinos are going to be uh, regulated. Uh, maybe in five, ten years. Yeah. Pardon. Uh, and then you have the broader perspective of Italy and Spain. I think there is a, a lot to do in, in Italy. Uh, oh, we have touched this market, this is quite interesting. Spain is going to be regulated. It's going to be a very tough market like France for operators. But still for affiliates, it's a huge opportunity. And then Germany will come up. Uh, we, we're all waiting for, for, for that. And that's why speaking about consolidation, it will happen with affiliates. Uh, we, we see it ourselves. Uh, uh, even between countries, uh, and, and yeah, that will go wrong, especially within the regulated markets. Yeah. yeah, yeah. One last thing, maybe I, I'm not sure with the presidential election in France and all the things. Yeah. We'll see. I, I think everybody uh, and I have uh, written that a, a few measures that would help a lot the sector, such as to have uh, a tax on the uh, GDR yeah, yeah. and the stakes and stuff like that. But it's the political uh, context is. Uh, is to do that, so I think it's going to be in 2013 yeah. that we might see those new regulations that will, of course, help the. Really? Problem. So, not even 2012? Not sure because no. it will be May no. and then, then uh, I think 2013, but I'm not too sure. Yeah. So, do you think if. I'm just very brief. <laughs> <laughs> and do you think if, uh, very briefly, do you think if, say, the socialists get in who are not, they don't like gambling generally, can you see an actual change of the law? Uh, uh, can, not cancellation, but maybe cutting down the scope, maybe preventing operators from marketing as much and launching as many offers. I, mean, I, I don't know really. Uh, I think the Europe has a has a strong uh, direction about the, 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 the competition and the opening. So I, I think now it's, 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 it's done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, but th there will be some amendments to the law and so things. Like, yeah, things probably change, but. How? You know, how far? Yeah. How fast? Sorry. They're not going to close it. They're, they're going to regulate it more. They're going to yeah. re uh, regulate other games like bingo, like forex, like. Uh, they will regulate bingo. Do you think? I think so. At, at one point, they will tackle it. Yes. They are. They are speaking about it in their reports. So. Yeah, but. Ah, yeah. <laughs> well, uh, bingo. It's for. It's forbidden. Yeah. But still, there are web websites that, that are. Uh, so yeah, uh, so it has a bingo, has a bingo offering, and they don't let anyone else offer it legally. Either. But that, but that's the case now. So they're going to stop those bingo websites. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. okay. All right. Well, thank you very much for this update on the uh, front post regulation. Uh, the news does get better eventually. We don't know when, but it will happen. Uh, and uh, thank you very much uh, for your time.